All right, guys, welcome aboard. Just pressing start here. So I'm doing a simulcast of, on YouTube if you're looking for more visual uh, to see exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, if you just want to listen to this as a podcast, that's fine. Welcome, YouTube viewers. Welcome to uh, podcast listeners. My name is Carlos Garcia, founder and CEO of GAR Capital. These are our top 10 stocks of 2022. Uh, my apologies for the delay on it. Obviously, the new year coming and everything like that. Uh, you know, we didn't have a day off in terms of the new year. That was the time I wanted to do it. So it would have been difficult to kind of do it during market session, and everything like that. So here we are, our first Saturday of the new year. Here's our top 10 stocks of 2022. I'm going to go ahead and read it out loud for our podcast listeners. If you are watching on YouTube, just bear with me. The first one is Goldman Sachs. The second one is Caterpillar. Third one is 5G, which is an ETF. Next is ARKK. This is Kathy Wood's ARK Investment ETF. Google, G-O-O-G, or Alphabet, NVIDIA, same one we had last year, Qualcomm, uh, uh, Ethereum, so no Bitcoin this year, Ethereum this year, Costco, and Microsoft. So those are our top 10 stocks of 2022. We're going to go over each one, one by one, what we like about it. So the first one we have on my screen here is Goldman Sachs. If you are looking here on the daily, it's a very nice upward trend. Right now, we're kind of stuck in range. As you know, in 2021, we had higher inflation. So what does well during a higher inflation period? Value stocks and the banks. So again, Goldman Sachs being my favorite bank. This is why it's part of it. So right now it is trading at 3, 397.51 a share. Uh, it started at the low point of 2021, was right around $270.62 a share. So it was already doing very well. Uh, the all-time high for the stock was 426.16, which was hit right around October of last year in 2021. So just wanted to show, kind of illustrate that point. Let's go and take a look at Yahoo Finance and look at some of their numbers in terms of Goldman Sachs. Really the thesis of Goldman Sachs is pretty much picking the best bank that we like them all. Goldman Sachs does have a commercial bank division with Marcus. That's an online bank, but most of it is an investment banking company. So again, that's one of the better ones out there. That's the one I wanted to. They trade very well as well in terms of uh, financial stocks in general. So I'm typing it up now on Yahoo Finance so we can bring up some of the earnings. I'm going to go ahead and read it out loud. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the chart yourself. That's the daily chart. Let's go ahead and bring it a look here. So there's one thing I talked about and uh, in regards to the last video I did, which was the 2021 S&P 500, I mean, excuse me, top 10 stocks of 2021 video. I talked about the P.E. ratio of the S&P 500 being at 30. So again, that's $30 for every dollar uh, earnings for the S&P 500 uh, on, on, tot on the total average. So the median number is around 1487 in regards to the PE ratio, that's the median. The average is right around 16. We're right at 30 or 2946, mind you. So the S&P has definitely gotten expensive, but especially in the low rate environment, this is the best yield you're gonna get. Unless you're investing in crypto, bonds are not returning that much either. So let's go and take a look back into Goldman Sachs. And you can see here their P.E. ratio is at 656. So it is definitely at a discount to the S&P, which is a great sign. But again, value companies tend to trade these low P.E. multiples, especially the banks. Dividend yield of about 2% on, on Goldman Sachs, which is very nice. It's glad, I'm glad to have that as an investor. Let's go and take a look at some of the financials. And let me go and bring this up here. Here's the financials. I can bring this annually here. Okay, so let's do this instead. Find that the best one to go by. You, you, uh, Yahoo Finance is okay, but I think I'm going to go with Google Finance here. Let's go and bring it up, and I'm going to bring up Goldman Sachs again. My apologies. So Goldman Sachs. Here we go. Let's go over some numbers here together. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the screen in front of me. If you listen to this on the podcast, here it is. Revenue in 20 uh, year-over-year change. 16.86%, that's annual. Uh, net income up about 11.73%. Diluted EPS about 17.64%. Net profit margin was down about 4.40%. And their operating income rose 34%. How about this? Net change in cash on in hand. Net change in cash gained 643% for 22.3 billion. Cash on hand, 155.84 billion, up 16%. Cost of revenue, 17.26% up. Good news is that obviously they make really great revenue, double-digit revenue growth, double-digit net income growth, uh, diluted EPS 
up as well, 17%. Uh, the only thing I look at here is the profit margins are slightly down. Obviously, that happens with lower interest rates. So it's down 4.40%. As rates go up in the, with the Federal Reserve, which we expect this year, the first one being in March, again, the uh, operating margin or the profit margin will increase for these banks. That's why I like Goldman Sachs. It's a great company to own and also pays a dividend. So can't really beat that. That's a good sign. Next one is Caterpillar. I'm excited about this one because I've never owned it, but I've, tra I've traded it before. Let's go and take a look at the P-E ratio of 23.97. This is an industrial. We've talked about industrial banks uh, and energy companies being something to look forward to as rates increase. I don't have an energy, disco, an energy stock this go around, but again, uh, we do have a industrial and we have a bank. So let's take a look at it. P-E ratio, 23.97 for Caterpillar. That's at a discount of 30 from the S&P 500. They have a dividend yield of 2%. That's great. As well, the same thing, well, 1.98%. That's same as uh, Goldman Sachs. So there you go. Let's take a look at the annual numbers. Now, granted, the revenue is down 22%. EPS is down 49%. Margins are down 36%. Again, we're looking towards the future growth, global recovery in terms of COVID. That's what we're looking for. But their cash on hand went up 20%, which is a good sign. Net change in cash gained as well. So again, kind of a, you know, prepping some cash for anything that bad that could happen, but it's very good to see. Margins are down, not my favorite. They're actually a profitable company, so that's a good sign. Revenue of 41.78 billion and a net profit margin of about 7% in their industrial uh, sector. Let's take a look at Caterpillar and how they're trading now. Caterpillar right now, if we bring up the daily chart, their high was 246.69. Their low for the year was 179.34. They're right at 224.19. I definitely expect them to break 246.69 as we start getting back to the grand reopening worldwide. Again, Caterpillar is also a China proxy. So again, if real estate does bounce over there or, you know, machines get back in order and the economy does get back into the shape that we once knew it was, Caterpillar will easily be a $270 stock as we'll float above that. If we go ahead and kind of extend it out forward uh, a little bit more, we're going to go to a max level of where it's been its highest. Its peak was 246.69. It's at 224 now. So again, and I'm going this by a longer range period, by about 30 years uh, on this chart, if you're looking here on YouTube. So again, Caterpillar, I do like this play. I'm definitely going to go ahead and buy some on Monday. Next here is SpyG. Now, SpyG is one of my favorites because I buy SpyG every single week. So SpyG, this is going to be a little more of a different explanation. So SpyG is called the S the spider portfolio e uh, growth ETF. So this is more into gold. Uh, there is no PE ratio on this one, but it does pay, uh, uh, some of it pays a dividend here. Let's take a look at some of their holdings here. Uh, let's see if I can bring up SPYG holdings. SPYG holdings. We're going to type that up here on Google. And here we are. SPYG. Here's the holding. This is on Yahoo Finance. All right. Let's just bring this up, waiting for the numbers to populate. And it won't show. Okay, let's go ahead and bring up Market Watch. That'll give us the Spy G holdings for sure. Okay, here we go. What Spy G holds? Now, this is why I invest in it every single week in my portfolio. Uh, one of my larger holdings is Spy G. They own, as a total portfolio that they have, 12% of it right off the rip is Apple. 11.43% of it is Microsoft. Two great companies I want to own. They also own Amazon 7%, Tesla 4.27%, Alphabet, Google. If you uh, combine both, is right around uh, about 7, 8% total. Uh, let's see here, NVIDIA 3.75%, Meta Platforms, which is Facebook 3.5%, Adobe, Home Depot, Netflix. So it's not all, it's not all tech, mind you. Uh, uh, Home Depot is there, Netflix, Salesforce, Thermo Fisher Scientific, United Health, one of my favorite companies, PayPal, Qualcomm, which is one of our top 10, Visa, AMD, MasterCard, Intuit, Procter & Gamble, Johnson Johnson, Broadcom, Abbey, and Danaher Corp. So a good mixture there. Most of it bulk is technology, 50% allocation, consumer services being about 15%, 10% in healthcare, 8% industrials, 8% in consumer goods, about 6% in financials, 1.4% in base materials, some utilities, and some oil and gas, very, very minimal. So you're talking about net assets, about nine, uh, 99, it's a bond, it's a stock company, stock holdings, 
uh, about 0.07 in cash, very little in bonds. $16.32 billion in assets on this ETF. The reason I'm buying this ETF is I want to own the basket of the best of the bunch, the ones that are really growing. I still expect growth companies to move forward. We'll probably get a little volatility, but SPY-G has been as consistent as it gets, so that's the one I want to hold. So next is ARKK, which is, we know, Cassie Woods ETF. So let's go ahead and type it up here if I can find it. That I had here. ARKK. Okay, the ARK Innovation Fund. Let's go over it. Let's go ahead and bring up the daily here on the chart. And you can see the high right around February was right around $159.70. We are now at $84.82, which is right near 50% off the all-time high. So let's see about what they're holding. That's the main, main thing. So we're really just doing this here. I want to buy here in blood. I want to buy cheaper. So again, I don't want to buy at all-time highs. I want to get in near where the lows are. You can see Tesla being 10% of, of the holdings. Coinbase, I want to own that. Teladoc, I own, well, I own Coinbase and Teladoc. Unity, I don't own, but I do own it with ARKK. Roku, I own. Zoom, I own. Shopify, I don't own. Spotify, I don't own. Exact Sciences and, Twil and Twilio. So those are the top 10 holdings of these funds. So again, if you're looking at forward thinking growth, it is more for me in a sense that, yes, 2022, I expect it to do better, especially when everyone's very pessimistic on Cathie Wood and these companies. That's where I find value. And the second thing being, this is more of a five, 10 year plan. Again, look at the companies that she's invested in. A lot of EV, a lot of tech, uh, crypto as well. These are all things in the future I expect to grow. Uh, more and more. So I still believe in Kathy Wood. I'm still holding on to it. And I'm expecting a nice little bounce in 2021. Even if we get back to 120, I'm okay with that. That's a nice game. You don't have to get back to 159.70. But again, maybe five years, definitely, it could be a possibility. Next is Google. I mean, Google, uh, if you use YouTube every day, Google is something that you probably want to own. Also, Google Cloud, Google Search, advertising, all good things. 2701 is a level I'm looking for. But again, I'm buying the names that I don't own in this portfolio already. I'm going to buy some Caterpillar on Monday. I'm going to buy some Google on Monday since I already own Goldman Sachs, SPYG, and ARKK. So 2701 is a level I'm looking for, but again, I will buy on Monday as well. So let's go ahead and take a look here at Google itself. Let's take a look at some of their numbers as well. Google being Alphabet. Now again, sticker shock may, may get something in your, uh, maybe a little more in your face. 27.40 for per share. We know if you're an Amazon, uh, an Amazon uh, investor, kind of the same deal. Those, those over $1,000 uh, 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 stock prices can really kind of spook some people. Let's take a look at the annual revenues, up 12% year over year. Net income up 17% year over year. Revenue of about $182.53 billion. Net income of about $40.27 billion. Delivery EPS 58.61, up 19%. Their margins are 22%. That's amazing. So that's gained about 4%. Net operating income, 41.22 billion, up 13%. Net change in cash on hand, 7.97 billion. And they have $26.47 billion in cash on hand. That's up 43%. I think Google is just one of the names that not everyone talks about. You know, everyone always talks about Amazon, they talk about Tesla, they talk about Apple and Microsoft. But Google gets kind of left behind, but then it's been kind of silently being the winner, chugging along, great company. I remember when this was IPO'd at like around $80. Boy, do I wish I bought some back then. But Google is a company I have not owned except in 5G. I definitely want to go ahead and get started as being a shareholder. I expect them, I would say I would put them in the bunch of, you know, you have the fang names, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. If you want to take out Netflix and add NVIDIA, that's fine. If there's kind of like the fortress, the three that you know for a fact are going to stay around, it's Apple, it's Microsoft, it's Google. Those are the three. And again, it's nothing against Amazon, but again, they have such high, high expenses that an Apple doesn't have, that a Google doesn't have. Uh, well, they, they can handle it more. So again, there's not tons of stores like uh, Amazon does with stores and warehouses and delivery. Apple doesn't have that expense, so hence their margins are stronger. Google doesn't have that issue as well, as well as Microsoft. So again, that's why I would say those are more of the fortress names. Those are the three I really think that if you just own, own them and hold them forever, you're always going to make some really good money on those three. So Google, all things being considered regarding their financial, I believe they're a home run. That's the one you want to own. 
I really, really can't wait to finally be a shareholder. I've been waiting for 2701 patiently for a little bit now. Actually, I was waiting for 2400, but it just kept chugging along and chugging along and chugging along. And uh, that's tough if you're an investor because it kind of just annoys you with the fact that, man, you kind of want to get in at a good price. But at the end of the day, this time around, I'm not going to time the market. I just want to get into Google and just go with it. So let's go ahead and go back to the next one is NVIDIA. NVIDIA, I went over the last video. We went over in the, in the top 10 stocks of 2021. Their numbers are rock solid. Let's go over one more time. And let's go ahead and go to NVIDIA. The only thing with Google is they do not pay a dividend. That's completely fine. Uh, but NVIDIA does about 0.06% or so. Again, you're buying NVIDIA because of growth. And we know what they're going to, we know what NVIDIA is about. NVIDIA is all about chips, uh, AI, self-driving cars. And I do believe that's the future as well. Their revenue is up 52% year over year. Let me go ahead and show you guys. Uh, revenue 16.6 .6 billion, net income 4.33 billion, uh, EPS, that little EPS of $1.73, that's all 53%. Net profit margins are ridiculous, 26%. That's their profit margin. That's amazing. Anything above 20 is really good. Again, net change in cash, negative 10 billion. Cash on hand, about 847 million. So again, they spent a little bit of money, definitely. I believe they bought uh, another company out there, I think it was Arm. Uh, cost of revenue is about $6.12 billion. So NVIDIA, a great company. We know what they make. I'll read you what NVIDIA is about. NVIDIA Corporation is an American multinational technology company incorporated in Delaware and based in Santa Clara, California. It designs graphics processing units for gaming. Big, metaverse, right? Uh, we know the PS5, you can't, you can't even buy that thing. You can't even find it. Uh, as well as chip units for the mobile computing and automotive market. Uh, when people say chip shortage, this is what they mean. Its primary GPU line label, GeForce, is in direct competition with GPUs of the Radeon brand by AMD, Micros of Advanced Micro Devices. I own that stock as well. NVIDIA expands its presence in the gaming industry with its handheld console, Shield Portable, Shield Tablet, Shield Android TV, and cloud gaming service, GeForce Now. They also make the chip for the Nintendo Switch, which is a really great system. So I won't bore you about what they do. We know what they do. We know they, what, what, what they can become. 268.64 is the level I'm buying on NVIDIA to add some more. So maybe we get that first thing on Monday and I get to add. I've been writing NVIDIA now for a while, for years. So again, I remember I bought it right around like 120, 140. Uh, but now we hit as high as 346.47. Now we're at 272 with the Qs coming down. But again, I don't think NVIDIA is a tough call there. I think NVIDIA is a great company to own. Let's take a look at Qualcomm, another stock I've never owned and I've had, I, I've been wanting to own it. Let's go ahead and bring it up here, Qualcomm. Qualcomm is trading right now at 180.41. You can see we had a nice boost from earnings <clears throat> right here, nice gap up, and it continued higher. So Qualcomm has been absolutely on fire with their earnings. Qualcomm is another chip company. They create semiconductor software and services related to wireless technology with their handsets 5G, 4G, CDMA, TDS, DMA, and WCDMA, uh, mobile communication standards. So just kind of keep that in your mind that this is more of a chip for cell phones. So again, let's look at their annual revenue. My goodness, 33, 33 billion of 42%. Net income, 9.04 billion, 73% year over year. That would be EPS, 787, 74% year over year. Net profit margin, 27% is their margin, insane. That's 26.94 to be exact. Operating income of 9.79 billion, that's up 57%. Net change uh, in cash, 409 million, that's up 107.97%. Uh, Cash on hand, holding about 7.12 billion, that's up about 6%. And the cost of revenue is 14.26 billion. What stands out to me is obviously the project profit margin and the revenue growth. Those are the things I want to look at. Also, Qualcomm, for a growth company, pays a dividend, 1.5%. That's something that's news, uh, uh, music to my ears. And the next thing here, the PE ratio for a growth company being cheaper than the S&P. Remember, S&P PEs are at 30. Qualcomm is at 22.92. NVIDIA's PE is a little higher, so keep that in mind. We'll go and take a look at that. But NVIDIA's prop, uh, PE ratio is 84 in comparison. So you're getting a company that has really great earnings based on the price that they're trading at. 2292 really makes it in uh, a very uh, bargain territory. Ethereum. Ethereum, what can we say? Ethereum outperformed Bitcoin last year. It is down right now. I'm taking a look at futures. But again, Ethereum is taking more of the, not in the market share in a sense, but more coins are being based on the ETH process. So again, I'm expecting ETH 
uh, and to have a stellar year. I don't, that doesn't mean that I think Bitcoin is going to fall. But I really like Ethereum and the project that they're doing. The only thing I wish they would work on is the gas fees. But again, we know what they are. It's a scarcity. It's digital. It's money. It's commerce. It's also a way to kind of hedge yourself against uh, you know, money printing. But that, that's not really the case anymore because we can see uh, Ethereum falling even as inflation has gone up. So that hasn't really been something that you can hang your hat on. But again, if you're looking for the future of, of payments, again, we also have NFTs now, non-fungible tokens like artwork and stuff like that. Most of it's being bought in Ethereum. So again, why not go with the main two, one or the other, Bitcoin or Ethereum? We did Bitcoin last year. We're doing Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum this year. Okay, one other one that I have never bought, and I'm kind of glad that, uh, um, then I'm not glad I didn't buy it, but I'm glad that I posed this one, uh, Costco. Costco just opened a location in my, in my town, a couple of, a uh, couple of, you know, not even a mile away from me, which is nice. I would love for it to get to 461.35. It's trading at 536.18. This is a value name. This is a consumer staple. We did the same thing with the top 10 last year. We put some growth, we put some value, and the value did work out a little bit here and there. Obviously, the best performer was NVIDIA and Bitcoin last year. We didn't go as heavy growth this year. Really, the big heavy growth one was ARKK this year. We have three value companies, and I believe one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of these companies, 70% of them pay a dividend. So there you go. We're kind of focusing on dividends as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at Costco here on the uh, Google Finance. Uh, they pay a dividend yield, not a big one, 0.59%. P.E. ratio is a bit high, but it's cheaper than Walmart's P.E. ratio. P.E. ratio for Walmart, I just did the video for the top 10 of 2021. Recap, that's trading at 50 P.E., Costco being right at 46. So, again, a little bit of the price your side. Let's take a look at their av uh, annual growth. Revenue, $195 million, uh, but up 17%. Net income, about $5 billion, up 25%. Dilute EPS of around 11.27, up 25%. Profit margin, again, we know the drill with, with these kind of companies, uh, especially retail and food products like that. They're not meant to make tons of money. You can't really gouge people's eyes out with toilet paper. 2.56% uh, in net profit margin. So that's still up 6% from the previous year. Uh, operating income, 7.22 billion, 32 billion, 32% uh, up. Net change in cash, they came down about a billion dollars. They paid a special dividend, I believe it was in 2020. Uh, that's uh, down 126%. Cash on hand, about $11.26 billion. Opening more locations, they're investing in that. They invested in my city here in Central Florida to bring it to Costco. I'm very happy they have that uh, down about 8%. Cost of revenue, $170.68 billion of about 17%. So we know what Costco is about. It's a membership club that sells food, and other products by bulk. But again, their main thing is can Costco pivot into online and make lo more locations? Because usually the up-and-coming areas tend to have a Costco nearby or a BJ's, but Costco being the largest of the wholesalers. Now, you can honestly say as well that Sam's Club is part of the Walmart brand as well, but it hasn't changed in terms of a one year to date the way Costco has uh, in one year. Look at the growth that it's had and compare that to a Walmart. It's not even close. You can see that uh, right around last year, 364.20 a share, and, and now it's trading at 536. And you can compare the difference here. Walmart, you know, basically in one year period, down 1.63%, but while Costco has gained 47% per share. So again, we're kind of looking for a little bit of a hybrid kind of safety consumer staple, kind of get some growth from, you know, uh, Costco that's trying to open more locations. That's something I want to see. So again, Costco being a really good choice for this one. Uh, again, I will be buying first thing on Monday morning. Next we have here is Microsoft. Last but not least, Microsoft is one of my favorite companies. I talked about that. The fortress that is Microsoft and the boss of CEOs, in my opinion, Satya Nadella, has done an absolutely exceptional job. Uh, Microsoft tapped an all-time high of $349 a share. It is now trading at $314. I don't think I don't need to explain to you, my audience, on how much what Microsoft does and everything like that, but what's really key is their cloud. They also pay a dividend, 0.79%. Microsoft is an American multinational technology corporation which produces computer software, electronics, first computers, and related services, but they're known for their software, which is because Microsoft Windows. But they also have Edward browsers, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Office that I actually have to pay for. 
you know, if you use Excel or PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, you better have it. But again, you can understand that it is one of the big five of the information technology companies, Amazon, Alphabet, Apple, and Meta. But Microsoft, again, their thing, their big deal is their cloud. That's where they make a, bulk, a good amount of their money. Let's take a look at the, some of their numbers. Revenue, $168 billion in 2021. Net year change of 17%. Net income of $61.27 billion, up 38%. Diluted EPS of $8.05. Profit margin. Now, this is where it gets absolutely sexy. 36.45% is their profit margin. Keep in mind, for every $100 they make, $36, $36 of that is profit. This is why they are where they are. It's absolutely ridiculous, their margins. That means it doesn't cost them that much to make these products or to do any, any kind of services. Net, cha net change in cash, $648 million. That's down 70%. Their operating income was up 31%. Cash on hand, $14.22 billion, 4.77 up. And $52.23 billion is their cost of revenue. So now we know exactly the profit margin. Revenue, $168 billion versus cost of revenue, $52 billion. There's your answer, 13.36 up. Microsoft, I consider a safe, a complete safe company, one of the best credit rating companies in the United States, the only one with a triple A rating other than Johnson & Johnson. So Microsoft knows how to manage their books. They know how to manage debt. They have cash to service any kind of debt. They have cash to give to shareholders. Their margins are absolutely insane. Microsoft, what more can you say about them? You just want to own them. I mean, that's really just the plain simple of it. So again, in contrast, I mean, in conclusion, Here's our top 10, Goldman Sachs, Caterpillar, SpyG, ARKK, Google, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, ETH, Costco, and Microsoft. There's your top 10 stocks of 2021, 2022. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you so much. And to our podcast listeners, that's what we got. So we'll go ahead and revisit back in next January. We'll see you in 2023 to recap these bad boys. Any questions, feel free to hit us up on our DM. GAR Capital on Instagram, and you can also tweet at us at GAR Capital, or you can go ahead and type in a question in the chat, in the comments section of this video on YouTube. I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you so much for your time, and let's make 2022 an amazing year.